it's Monday, day of days. Welcome back to Hot News. Hope you had a good weekend, relaxing, unwinding, taking your mind off the perpetual frustration that is this current era. And let me make your frustration even greater with today's existential question of the day, which is, is a corn dog a lollipop? Ah, no, ah! Is it though? You can lick it, you can chew it, right? You can suckle it like you would a lollipop. Is it just a meat lollipop with some bread in on it? I mean, if you put meat at the center of a Tootsie Pop, it's kind of like a corn dog, right? Like I said, frustration always coming to you at Hot News here. That's what's going on. I just wanted to address something that uh, happened in our video last night about Best Buy and our travels there. Some people were like, you can buy tech products on Amazon. What the heck are you talking about, Brett? At the time that we recorded, actually, it, apparently Amazon has resolved this, but when we filmed that video, our earliest shipping date for anything that we were gonna order was April 22nd, and we even got emails emails from Amazon saying that they're not gonna be prioritizing tech products because they want to make sure that essentials get out. But since then, like you can now buy tech products on Amazon, but you couldn't when we did the video, but that was last week and now it's a new week and new week means new news, but new news means old news. And that's what we're gonna be talking about with this brand new Nvidia GPU that we've never seen before. Reese, prepare your ears and your brain, okay, you ready? I'm ready. You've never heard of this before. It's a GTX 480, but with 512 CUDA cores. What? Yes, you haven't heard of this before because the GF100 that was used in the GTX 480, apparently they didn't have enough yield on the chips or the power consumption was too high considering the GTX 480 is known to be one of the hottest cards of all time. And so they disabled some of the cores, but somebody has found an engineering sample of the famous GTX 480 Ti, which has 512 CUDA cores. This was one of the first times where we didn't have the full core unlocked on a product. We've seen that a little bit more now with Nvidia stuff where they put it in the Titan level or a little bit higher. But back then, this was kind of unprecedented to not have the 100 core give you the full performance of everything, which was 512 CUDA cores. Well, the GTX 480 has been found. Somebody has pictures of it. They've done some benchmarking. It looks like it's about 6% faster than a regular 480, but get this at 43 percent higher power consumption. See, this is why power efficiency matters, folks. People are like, I don't care how much power my computer draws from a wall. Yes, that may be true. However, the only reason you can say about that at this stage is because we've gotten so power efficient that you can get so much performance out of such little wattage. 2080 Ti is a 250 watt-ish card. So was the 480. Okay, it pulled 644 watts from a wall to get that extra 6% performance, which was crazy. 200 extra watts than what the 480 was supposed to run at, even though it was a 250 watt TDP card. It was crazy, 280 watts. I can't remember how much, how many watts. The whole point, whole point, is that the GTX 480 was a magnificent wonderland of tech, and I wish it was back. I wish we had another card like that that just pushed the absolute limits, didn't give a crap about thermal constraints, and was just like, here, buy this if you want to heat up your room and you want the best possible performance. You have a 12,000 watt power supply, run this card. Here it is. NVIDIA, AMD, work on that. Give that to me, please. AMD is gonna be giving stuff to us in the form of next generation consoles with RDNA 2. We're switching from GTX 480 all the way to RDNA 2. And the people over at Digital Foundry did a little bit more insider scoop on what the Xbox Series X is gonna have, specifically in relation to the design of the new Xbox Series X, as it now looks like a tower instead of like a flat little piece of plastic or boxy little piece of plastic. Anyways, they found that the new design of the Xbox Series X can increase air flow by up to 70%. So this is one of the reasons why where they're going with the vertical tower macro type cooling where they just exhaust everything. It's because it performs better with airflow. With more airflow means you probably have more cooling capacity since you're moving the air a little bit faster and getting off the hot parts, which means that you can have that 12 teraflops of performance. But the US government has said to Huawei, you can't have TSMC, which is a Taiwanese company. You're not allowed to use them. You know why? Why? You know why? Why? I'm gonna tell you why. You want to know why? Why? Because we don't like you, that's why. So this is something that we talked about previously in an episode of Hot News that the US government was working with TSMC to make it so that they couldn't sell to certain people unless the US approved of that because they were using some US technology and they were just gonna like kind of increase the amount that they're controlling, how much TSMC can use American technology to sell to companies that they don't like, specifically Huawei. But as you could imagine, this could get out of hand quite quickly or it could yield to 
like kowtowing of companies to make sure that they're trying to be in the good graces of the US government and doing things that they otherwise wouldn't in order to make sure that they could have their fabrication facility. Anyways, talked about this before. Apparently, according to a Reuters exclusive, the US is preparing to implement that right now. Before it was in discussion and they're trying to work out how to do it. Now, apparently, senior officials in the Trump administration have agreed to new measures to restrict the global supply of chips to Huawei through restricting TSMC specifically. Obviously, this is quite just large of an issue. This is a big thing. If they can start controlling companies in other countries that utilize their technology by saying, well, you have to sell to only people that we agree to, you can imagine that could turn into this quite dystopian landscape. Or potentially, I'm not clued up enough on the legal side of it that there's no possibility for this and it's only for Huawei and it's like just a direct usage of one measure. But again, anytime there's legal precedent for one thing, having the worst case scenario become a reality is always there. The random chimp attack okay, is never a non-zero percent possibility. <laughs> Things like a great shark falling on your porch it's never a 0% possibility, okay? There's always the option that sharks can be launched at you from a Sharknado. You gotta be prepared. Just because I'm paranoid doesn't mean that they're not out to get us. Huawei's gotta be prepared for the Sharknado that is the US government. And I'm not prepared for the Sharknado that is HBM2, which has been quite expensive when put into graphics cards. It's one of the reasons why the Radeon 7 just didn't really sell, and AMD did away with it quite quickly because 16 gigabytes of HBM2, which was the only way that they could get a faster card, cost them a heckin' ton of money. Well, it looks like another company is coming in on the production of HBM2, Micron is going to be launching HBM2 later this year, which would mean SK Hynix, Samsung, and Micron are all producing it. Whether or not this will drop prices, or as we've seen in alleged previous instances, this is just gonna lead to price fixing and increased prices. We'll see how this goes. The way this impacts AMD moving forward is that they discuss with RDNA2, there's gonna be a mixture of HBM2 and GDDR6 devices. So some devices that AMD could come out with could have more available options for HBM2 to see if it would be faster. Faster is the name of the game when it comes to Intel because they can't architecturally improve things, so they just gotta make it faster. Gotta give it more kerchoo in the clock speed, which is what this leak slide of the 10900HK, I can't even say the numbers anymore, of the next generation Intel mobile processors boosting up to 5.3 gigahertz on a laptop. The i9-10980HK processor, eight cores, 16 threads, 5.3 gigahertz. What do you need to cool this? The same thing you needed to cool that GTX 480. Just a lot of hope and ice. And there's not a lot of hope for Intel right now because there's more benchmarks coming out about the 10900K, which is gonna be the desktop processor, and it's 30% faster than the 9900K, which makes sense because it has 25% more cores and it's slightly faster in clock speed. So the 30% multi-core enhancement that we're seeing of the 10900K versus the 9900K would make sense. It's, it's as if a 9900K has 10 cores. Wow. You just wrinkled my brain, man. What's been scandalous for Intel is that they haven't released a driver update for their KV Lake G processors in 12 months, Reese. 12 months, they got a whole year without releasing a driver update for their Intel CPU, AMD GPU, merger of the two worlds. Nobody thought this could happen. Chip, do you remember, remember these things? Anyways, the latest driver that came out now, there's a new driver, it's to fix the AMD graphics. They canceled the project in October, they're working on their own graphics, they cared nothing for AMD, and they're done. They don't care no more, clearly. By 12 months, no, no driver update. But AMD cares about you and making sure that you pay as little as possible for the performance that you want. But that doesn't mean that there's not variation in their product stack. This is a weird segue, I'm so sorry. Anyways, we've got some indication that the difference between the lowest end Ryzen 4000 SOC that's gonna be in laptops and the highest end, it's gonna be about 30%. The 4800U and the 4900HS are a difference 30%. There's a cavern in between the two. Considering the U is the low powered one, the HS is the high super speed one. That's what HS stands for in my mind. There you go, 30% difference, which will obviously relate to probably about a 30% difference in cost, if not more. Because when you get the higher powered processors, you also get the higher powered screen with the higher powered graphics card, which just means that those laptops are gonna be jacked up in price. But hopefully we can jack up the batteries in our earbuds that are coming out. Obviously Apple AirPods have paved the way with selling tons of units. If they were a dedicated company, they'd be in the top 100 companies in the entire world. Anyways, Qualcomm is coming out with a new SOC that could potentially give up to 13 hours of battery life in the earbuds. This probably would not be what goes into the next generation AirPods, but could be found in alternatives from Google, likely not in the Pixel Buds that are coming out or anybody else who produces knockoffs of the AirPods, which is basically what every single 
dedicated earbuds have been. The only ones that I've found I've taken a fancy to at this point have been the Sony W, the, 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 the noise canceling ones. And even those are kind of gaudy and aud audacious and not, not my style. I'll tell you, but also strings hanging out my ears, not my style either. But this phone is my style. The Planet Computers Astro Slide, it's my thing, okay? It's got a 6.5 inch touchscreen, right? It's got 5G, it's got everything that you would want. 48 megapixel rear camera, six gigabytes of RAM, 128 gigabytes of storage, expandable via micro SD slide, and 5G, it's like I said, but it could slide up and then you got a keyboard. No. Yeah, full, full smartphone, full like modern smartphone, keyboard on top. Ooh, or keyboard underneath rather as it were. This is not the early 2000s. I don't care the Astro slide. I just I love it so much You slide it up and then you got a full keyboard It's basically like a computer on the go it has a starting price of less than $500 So I'm happy about this. The only downside is you get a MediaTek processor, which I mean, you know You're only paying less than $500. So it's what you get and you get this knockoff of Cougar Conquer's case from Sigma Tech Perseus I just want to show this because there's been constant knockoffs of these things. It's a slightly different version It's kind of more enclosed than the Cougar Conquer But I don't think that's for the better and it's not for the better that the entire world is shutting down for this one satellite internet company OneWeb they have filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy after they failed to secure funding because of the world Obviously becoming unhinged in the time where we need internet the most and satellites to provide us with that internet because Voldemort can't take down space satellites that we know of yet this could have been the best time but nope they can't get the money so because the financial support didn't come through chapter 11 bankruptcy has happened however as I've learned as of recently chapter 11 doesn't ever mean that the company goes away it just means that they're restructuring their debts and could potentially come back at some point but while things are bad for one web they're not bad for SpaceX because NASA has picked SpaceX to be the company that delivers cargo to the lunar gateway which is gonna be the gateway to the moon obviously lunar gateway that's how that works works. When I think Lunar Gateway, I just think of the scene in Final Fantasy VIII where the moon becomes all wibbly wobbly with all of them dang demon, demon animal, animals in them. And then it just shoots on down to us. Pandora's Pand Lunar Pandora. I think that's what it's called. Jason's going to fact check me on this. Anyways, when I hear Lunar Gateway, I think of the Lunar Pandora event in Final Fantasy VIII. That's not this. This is where humans go to the moon. Although we could be the wibbly wobbly demon animals going there. Who knows? And I hope my face is wibbly warbly when it comes to facial recognition, because then I can't be detected. Uh, nobody knows what the face looks like, right? Hopefully, no. I've put, I've put thousands of hours of my face on the internet for free? Crap, I'm in the wrong business. Well, that's what Microsoft's decided when it comes to their investment in some of their facial recognition tech, talking about how they are advocating more for privacy than they are for the expansive use of recognizing everybody's face. And they've done that by canceling some minority investments that they had in facial recognition companies, such as AnyVision. They're gonna be pulling out of their stake in that company, no date specified. But Microsoft put in the money where their mouth is by pulling out of facial recognition tech. And I should probably just start wearing like a mask or something and just conceal my identity because I'm screwed if if like a rogue dystopian controlling government comes in. They got all the data. Speaking of data, good segue, Backblaze, which is a company that we've been previously partnered here on UFT Tech, currently not a sponsor anyways. This is just a little cool article. They've achieved one exabyte of total storage. That's a thousand plus petabytes. It's a lot of storage. Good job, Backblaze. And good job, Internet Archive. They've opened up their open library to make it so that people in the midst of the Voldemort stuff that's going on can read books because previously the way that it worked is that they only had a limited amount of copies of each book that if somebody was taking it out, you couldn't then also rent the ebook and it was based on people's like local public libraries. But since a lot of public libraries are shut down, people are using the internet archive more. Anyways, the whole point is to say that they've kind of canceled the limits on who can rent which book at which time and that all the books are free for alls at this point. Go rent the books. But you know how books are just a remix of the dictionary? Well, music's just a remix of itself. And it appears that Logic Pro X is gonna have an update that's gonna bring live loops to it. There's a lot, there's an unreleased version with like code data showing that it might have live loops where you can play, edit, and arrange musical ideas in real time. Reese is having a mental breakdown for some reason. You wanna give us your thoughts? I want this so bad. I don't need to use Ableton then. He doesn't need to use Ableton then is what he says. And I ably need to see this version of the OnePlus 8 because it's called Interstellar Glow and it looks amazing. I love the color on this. Good job, OnePlus, give me that phone. And I'm gonna give you the end of this hot news. Don't forget about today's existential question of the day, which is, is a corn dog a lollipop? Yep, just have to end with that one. Frustrating as it may be, your reality is now turned topsy-turvy. Down is up, left is right, Brett is gone, bye. <laughs>